we meet on Sunday because of the resurrection. I don't know if you know that. Uh, that's why churches, Christian churches, meet on Sunday. That's the day of the resurrection. And every week we, we remember that. Uh, the gospel is uh, complete because of the resurrection. You may have heard of the gospel. It's the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. And uh, you can't have the gospel without the resurrection. Uh, this morning we saw a play. And boy, I, I appreciate all the effort that's gone into that. But let me tell you, when Jesus did it, it wasn't a play. It was real. The soldiers were real. The blood was real. The death was real. Uh, you know, our, our Jesus walked to the tomb. <laughs> uh, that, that wasn't the way it was. His, uh, his breath had stopped. His heart had stopped. Uh, he was dead. And they placed him in the tomb. He was there three days. And then he was alive. And that's what is, was so amazing to those people who, who saw him. I, I was thinking this morning, you can imagine if you were at the cemetery and all of a sudden something starts coming out of the ground and it's someone. It would be pretty startling to see someone you've seen die and you've seen buried alive. And that's the testimony of Jesus Christ, is the resurrection of Jesus. I'm going to give you quite a few scriptures this morning. Now, I hope... They'll be on the screen here so that you can see them. Because the main important thing you'll hear this morning is what the Bible says. I'm not going to take a long time. Uh, I'm well known for not taking a long time. Uh, but uh, I, I do want to take some time and share uh, the Word of God with you this morning. I'm starting in 1 Corinthians 15, and I'm going to read starting in, in verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. By which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye've believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. I want, I want to particularly point out another verse, verse 26. It says, the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. See, God calls death an enemy. Uh, we can pretend that death is okay, but uh, death is an enemy. And when the Bible talks about death, it's not only talking about our body dying, it's talking about separation from God. Uh, God made man to be in fellowship with him. When God placed Adam and Eve in the garden, uh, they walked with the Lord. Uh, you know, what an amazing thing it was as they, they had communion with Him and they enjoyed His fellowship. But you know, the Bible says there came a time when Adam and Eve sinned. And uh, the Bible says, well, let me read Genesis 3, verse 8. They heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. You see, instead of fellowshipping with God, they hid. And the reason was they'd sinned, and they knew they'd sinned. Sin separates us from God. Fellowship was immediately broken, and they no longer walked with God. They hid from God. And, and that's pretty much been our relationship with God ever since. Uh, in Romans chapter 5 and verse 12, the Bible very specifically says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Listen, we can blame Adam, but we've chosen to sin ourselves as well. We're all sinners before God. Death came as a result of sin. And listen, God was not surprised. When God made us, He knew we'd sin. Now, the Bible refers to Jesus as the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. You know, God didn't say, oh, what's this? What have I done? No, when God made us, He knew we'd sin. He knew He would have to come and live and die for us and rise from the dead. In fact, in Genesis 3, verse 15, it's a little bit obscure, but it's basically saying right in Genesis 3 that God was going to send the Savior. I will put, he's actually talking to Satan here. He says, I will put enmity between thee, Satan, and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Jesus is going to bruise Satan's head on the cross. He's going to die for sins and rise again. And uh, it'll hurt Jesus. It'll bruise his heel. But God in Genesis 3 already is promising the Redeemer. 
We are born separated from God by sin. And separation from God can only be taken care of by God. In 1 Corinthians 15 and verses 21 and 22, you can see why I had these written out. I'm just mainly sharing some scriptures with you this morning. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Sin and death came by the first Adam. And the Bible calls Jesus the second Adam. Through Christ comes, comes life. Uh, in Romans 6.23, he says, The wages of sin is death. Romans 3.23, he says, All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You see, the way back to God is only God's way. Your way will not do. You could be the best person in the world, and the Bible still says you'll fall short of the glory of God. Isaiah put it this way, Isaiah 53, verse 6. He says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. You see, the problem is we're going our own way. Your way won't get you to heaven. You've got to go God's way. And God's way is Jesus Christ. It's a person. I heard of it. It was a true illustration. Uh, firemen were trying to rescue a person, and their, their ladder was about two meters short. And one of the firemen got up, and he put his feet on the top rung, and he put his hands on the window, and he said, Now, I'm your way. Climb down me. Well, in a sense, that's what Jesus did. The gap between God and man. Jesus said on the cross, I'm your way. Climb on me. What a blessing it is to know that even though sin is in our world, and we, we struggle because of sin. Death is an enemy. We, I hate death. It separates us from people we love. But Jesus took death and made it the cure for our sin. That's the way God is. He takes something bad and he makes it something good. And through the death of Christ, he took our sins and he died and he rose again. Jesus is our way. John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And God is very specific there. He says, there's no other way. Now, you can try other ways, but it won't lead to heaven. It won't lead to God. Jesus said he's the, the only way. In Romans chapter 5 and verse 8, the Bible says, God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus didn't die for us because we were such good people, because we were so nice. He died for us because he loved us and because we needed it. He showed his love. Now, like I said, Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Aren't you glad? You know, the Bible says the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. And Jesus on the cross confronted that very struggle, life and death. He gave his life. He rose again. Uh, Jesus said in Luke chapter 9 and verse 22, the Son of Man, he's talking about himself, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be slain, and be raised the third day. Jesus told them, I'm going to suffer, I'm going to die, but I'm going to rise again. Uh, the angel said, you, you've probably heard this a few times this week, in Luke 24, verse 6, He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, and be crucified, and the third day rise again? He reminds him. Remember Jesus said that? And the Bible says, and they remembered his words. Jesus had said he would die, but he would rise again. Uh, the disciples in, in Luke 20, 24 and verse 34, uh, the Bible says, they said, the Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared unto Simon. They realized it's happened. Jesus has, has risen again. In Acts chapter 4 and verse 33, uh, the Bible says, With great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. 
See, that was, that was their sermon. That was their message. Jesus is risen. The one you crucified, he's alive. He's the Savior. He's the Messiah. Jesus faced that struggle of life and death, and he won. Now, I know people today like to talk about how they, they fought cancer or they fought this or that. Listen, if God doesn't give you life, you don't have life. But Jesus faced death for us, and he won. He rose victorious. In Romans chapter 10 and verse 9, God puts it this way, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Do we believe it in our heart, we confess it with our mouth, and it's particularly that not only did he die, but he, he rose again. In 2 Corinthians 1 and, and verse 9, now, he, I like this, the way he phrases this. We had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead. Listen, death should remind us. We're not the victors over death. Jesus is. We don't just need life. We need eternal life. God has what you need for life and eternity. You know, we talk about the gospel, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, let me, let me read. This is uh, one of my last verses here. Romans chapter 4, verse 24. He says, If we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. See, he was delivered for our offenses, for our sins. He died for our sins. He was raised again for our justification. Justification means declared righteous. You ever hear somebody say, I need to get right with God? Well, listen, Jesus is the only way you can get right with God. You need to be justified, and God has to do that for you. He died for our sins. He rose again for our justification. Then he says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we've sac uh, we've, we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Now, Jesus and the resurrection are God's victory over sin and death. I can put it real simply. With Jesus, you don't need to fear death. Without Jesus, you should fear death. Without Jesus, the Bible says he's the only way to God, the only way to heaven. Uh, I've mentioned Romans 6.23 several times now, but let me close with that. He says the wages of sin is death. Most of us understand wages. If you work, you get wages. You deserve them. They don't give them to you, you you're upset. Wages, we earn them. Well, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. What we've earned, what we deserve, death, separation from God. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It's not through us. It's not through a church. It's not through a ceremony. It's through a person, the person of Jesus Christ. Let me encourage you this morning. Don't get what you deserve. Listen, you can cry out for justice all you want. I don't want justice. I want mercy. Don't get what you deserve. Don't get your wages of sin. That's separation from God and hell. Get what Jesus offers, the gift of eternal life. He paid for it on the cross. He, he shed his blood for your sins and my sins. And he rose in victory over sin and death. That struggle of life and death, listen, Jesus is what makes it make sense. Sin came, death came because of our sin. Christ died for our sin and rose victorious and offers us not just life, eternal life, abundant life, life with him. Now, becoming a Christian starts by being saved. It's a good Bible term. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It means saved from hell, saved from ourselves. Uh, but it's not just to keep us out of hell. Being saved uh, is so that you can know and, and love the Lord. So you can go back to that fellowship that God created us for, that God had with Adam and Eve before sin came. And that's what God wants. He wants, to be, he wants you to have fellowship with Him. We're going to close this morning with uh, a song, Just As I Am, Without One Plea but that thy blood was shed for me. We call this the invitation. 
Now we're kind of crowded for our, our little building here. That's all right. Um, we're going to get uh, Neville to come and, and lead us in this song. It'll be up uh, up on the screen.